Welcome back again guys. We are talking about pulmonary ventilation. In the last video we have just talked about the overview of this process. Now in this video we will be talking about the pulmonary ventilation uh, and especially about the inspiration process which is a part of breathing. We know there are two stages of breathing. One is inspiration or taking up uh, oxygen and other air particles and then second part is expiration or releasing carbon dioxide contained uh, air. So in this case uh, we will be talking about inspiration majorly right so let me write inspiration now what we try to say in this particular case actually inspiration expiration they are occurring simultaneously inspiration expiration continues just like a cycle just like a heart cycle is there it's a kind of pulmonary ventilation cycle and we all will be also talking about that pulmonary ventilation cycle there but let's now for this session talk about the inspiration now for inspiration to occur remember these three things to fulfill that volume of your re, uh, rib cage or uh, rib cavity you need to increase the volume so that the pressure drops as a result air will flow from outside inside your lungs that's the actual goal so how to increase the volume that's the first thing for and that's the first and last thing for your uh, ventilation process and for that purpose, we we know that we are having intercostal muscle, rib cage, and diaphragm working together, right? Now, you I assume that you must know the basics of anatomy of your uh, respiratory system, that is, uh, your lungs, trachea, trach, and how they are organized and arranged, your pleura, and everything. I think you know that's the basic thing. Anatomy should be known before going to discussion of any physiological process. That's a uh, rule of thumb right so I assume you know now let's talk about how that process actually works now we'll be seeing two different views here one view of the straight straight view in straight view what we can see here th if this is the reef cage let's say this is the reef cage uh, again this is the reef cage and if we if I draw the dra diaphragm here the diaphragm here is this right so let's say this is the diaphragm like that so if this is the diaphragm and from here everything is organized like this rib cage is there this blue thing is the rib cage and these are the lungs and this is the diaphragm that's why we're talking about you need to know this because D for diaphragm here this is R for rib cage so everything is placed like this right here so this this is the normal situation of your lungs now what is going on in case of inspiration from front view this is the inspiration and let me draw let me draw another let me draw uh, the side view also so for the side view like this from the side view there is another muscle this is a muscle that I draw this is the diaphragm muscle okay this muscle is called intercostal muscle okay so this is two different views one is the side view and is the front view of your lungs normally now what is going on here when you are we need to increase the volume right that's the important case to increase the volume normally the diaphragm plays like this the relaxed form of the diaphragm you just con contract the diaphragm and diaphragm is kind of flattened out so contraction of the diaphragm is flattening out so as a result of that so if I draw the flattening out here in the, with a different color with let's say with this blue uh, color to show you now or, or let's say with this black color to show you how it flattens out so it actually flattens out to be like this and you can see the area is getting increased because normally normally I should have drawn like this because the diaphragm is much more like this previously the diaphragm was like that but now now it is kind of flattening out straight kind of structure is formed by morph morphological changes there 
of the diaphragm and as a result the cavity area this area is slightly increased not too much but slightly this is one thing and second thing is that from the side view we can see this is the intercostal muscle and this is called the external external intercostal muscle external intercostal muscle so this external intercostal muscle kinds of lifts this rib cage up so they lift or they helps to elevate the rib cage up slightly so now previously this is the rib cage but now after they lifting things up the rib cage will form this dotted line structure so rib cage are rip lifted to form slightly bigger so you can see these are the two important stages one is this second is this first is the diaphragm flattens out contracted and second thing is this external intercostal muscles kind of con elevated so it, they elevates the rib cage with themselves right so the now the chest cavity area as you can see the chest cavity area is increased in higher amount so the volume of chest cavity is increased the volume of chest cavity is increased as the volume of chest cavity increases we know the pressure inside your lungs is getting decreased and what pressure the air pressure inside your lungs is getting decreased and we know in all the aspects our lungs wants to maintain the natural pressure in in our lung region that is fixed so now as a result of the pressure falls from that natural level so air from outside just flow back inside our lungs to to manage that pressure fall and balances that pressure with the barometer pressure of natu natural barometer pressure right so that's the important part here right so once the volume increased pressure decreased and air starts to flow that's the funda then the air starts to flow from here majorly oxygen filled where air it will go and it will go to your lungs the lungs are getting uh, slightly area, higher area to go so it is a wrong idea that people may th think many many of the people many students think that uh, this is a way that normally uh, you just elevate uh, you just take oxygen and when the oxygen goes there your lungs getting inflated but that's not the case your lungs getting inflated first your lungs get it increment in the volume first as a consequence of this air flows there so air flowing is a second part it's a result of something but the cause is the increment of your chest cavity that's the cause that's not the effect so please do not abide this particular concept your chest cavity increase first then air flows in due to the result of air flow it's not increased that's the important thing okay so that's how the inspiration actually occurs and in the future video will be talking about how expiration occurs and obviously this inspiration that we talking about it's it's of quiet breathing so i must write this is quiet quiet inspiration or quiet breathing during quiet breathing because during uh, vigorous breathing or deep breathing many other muscles are involved in that case you need to increase it much more further so other muscles are involved they are trying to increase the area uh, increase the volume in much amount that's slightly different thing but quiet re respiration occurs in this way right so that's it guys thank you